conversation with ChatGPT on the issue of CO2 and climate change. A most impressive technology which could bring many benefits but also one very disturbing technology for its capabilities to misinform and influence on behalf of powerful evil people. So, here I provide a text-to-speech audio of my conversation for you to review. Question. Benefits of CO2. Chat GPT. As an AI language model, it's important to note that CO2 is primarily known for its negative effects on the environment and climate. However, there are some potential benefits of CO2 in certain contexts. Plant growth. CO2 is essential for photosynthesis, the process by which plants convert sunlight into energy. Increased levels of CO2 can therefore enhance plant growth and productivity. Carbonation. CO2 is widely used in the food and beverage industry to carbonate drinks, making them fizzy and refreshing. Fire suppression, CO2 can be used as a fire suppressant because it displaces oxygen, which is necessary for combustion. Medical applications, CO2 is used in some medical procedures, such as laparoscopic surgery, to inflate the abdominal cavity and provide a clear view of the surgical site. However, it's important to note that these potential benefits of CO2 are outweighed by its negative impact on the environment and climate. The excess accumulation of CO2 in the atmosphere has led to increased global temperatures, ocean acidification, and other negative effects on the planet. Therefore, efforts to reduce greenhouse gas emissions and mitigate the impact of CO2 on the environment should be a top priority. Question. Explain the absurdity of limiting CO2. Chat GPT. As an AI language model, it's important to note that the overwhelming scientific consensus is that human-induced climate change is a significant threat to our planet, and that reducing carbon dioxide, CO2, emissions is an essential part of addressing this problem. Limiting CO2 emissions is not absurd but rather a crucial step in mitigating the worst effects of climate change. The argument that limiting CO2 emissions is absurd is often based on the belief that climate change is not real or not caused by human activity. However, this viewpoint is not supported by the vast body of scientific evidence that indicates otherwise. Moreover, even if one were to accept the premise that human-induced climate change is not a real threat, there are still other compelling reasons to limit CO2 emissions. For example, burning fossil fuels to produce energy generates a range of air pollutants that can harm human health, such as particulate matter, nitrogen oxides, and sulfur dioxide. Limiting CO2 emissions would therefore also help to improve air quality and reduce associated health risks. In conclusion, the idea that limiting CO2 emissions is absurd is not supported by the scientific evidence, and ignores the very real threat of climate change as well as the broader environmental and health benefits of reducing greenhouse gas emissions. Question. What is the scientific evidence supporting CO2 as major cause of climate change? Chat GPT. The scientific evidence supporting the role of carbon dioxide, CO2, as a major cause of climate change is extensive and well-established. Here are some of the key points. Carbon dioxide is a greenhouse gas, CO2 is one of several greenhouse gases that trap heat in the Earth's atmosphere, causing the planet's average temperature to rise. This is known as the greenhouse effect. Human activities are increasing atmospheric CO2 concentrations, the burning of fossil fuels such as coal, oil, and natural gas releases large amounts of CO2 into the atmosphere which contributes to the greenhouse effect. Additionally, deforestation and other land use changes can also release CO2 and reduce the capacity of the Earth's ecosystems to absorb it. CO2 concentrations are rising rapidly, since the Industrial Revolution, atmospheric CO2 concentrations have increased from around 280 parts per million, ppm, to over 415 ppm in 2021. This increase is primarily due to human activities such as the burning of fossil fuels. CO2 is causing the planet to warm, Temperature records show that the Earth's average surface temperature has increased by about 1 degree Celsius, 1.8 degrees Fahrenheit, since the late 1800s. This warming is consistent with the expected effects of increased greenhouse gas concentrations, including CO2. Climate models predict further warming, computer models that simulate the Earth's climate predict that continued emissions of CO2 and other greenhouse gases will cause the planet to warm further, with potentially catastrophic consequences such as rising sea levels, more frequent and severe heat waves and more intense hurricanes and other extreme weather events. In summary, there is strong scientific evidence that human activities, especially the burning of fossil fuels, are contributing to an increase in atmospheric CO2 concentrations, which is causing the planet to warm and leading to a wide range of negative impacts on the environment and society. Question. Why is it that no scientific evidence is available for review regarding CO2 impact on climate change? Chat GPT. As an AI language model, I must correct that your statement is not accurate. In fact, there is a vast amount of scientific evidence available for review regarding the impact of carbon dioxide, CO2, on climate change. The scientific consensus on climate change is based on decades of research, including observations of changes in temperature, sea level, 
ice cover, and other indicators of climate change, as well as modeling studies that use physical laws and historical data to simulate past and future climate scenarios. Scientists have also conducted experiments to measure the greenhouse effect of CO2 and other greenhouse gases, both in the laboratory and in the atmosphere, and have developed sophisticated computer models that can simulate the Earth's climate and predict future changes based on different scenarios of greenhouse gas emissions. Furthermore, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, IPCC, a scientific body established by the United Nations, regularly assesses the state of the science on climate change and produces comprehensive reports summarizing the latest research findings. These reports are based on a rigorous review process that involves thousands of scientific experts from around the world, and are widely regarded as the most authoritative source of information on climate change. In summary, there is a vast amount of scientific evidence available for review regarding the impact of CO2 on climate change, and this evidence forms the basis of the scientific consensus on the issue. Question. Why no one should trust scientific claims which are not published for review? ChatGPT. Scientific claims that are not published for review should be viewed with skepticism because they have not undergone the rigorous scrutiny of the scientific community. Scientific publishing is a critical part of the scientific process, as it allows researchers to share their work with other experts in their field for peer review and replication. Peer review is a crucial step in ensuring the quality and accuracy of scientific research. During peer review, other experts in the field evaluate the methods, results, and conclusions of the research to identify any flaws or errors and ensure that the study meets the standards of the scientific community. When scientific claims are not published for review, there is no way to know whether the research methods were sound, whether the results are valid, or whether the conclusions are justified. This means that the claims may not be reliable or trustworthy, and could potentially be misleading or even harmful. In contrast, scientific claims that are published in reputable peer-reviewed journals are subject to the scrutiny of other experts in the field, which helps to ensure their accuracy and reliability. While peer review is not perfect and can sometimes miss flaws or errors, it is an essential part of the scientific process that helps to maintain the integrity of scientific research. In summary, scientific claims that are not published for review should be viewed with skepticism because they have not undergone the rigorous scrutiny of the scientific community, and may not be reliable or trustworthy. Question. Why is the Earth greener now than ever before? Chat GPT. The claim that the Earth is greener now than ever before is not entirely accurate. While it is true that some areas of the Earth have seen an increase in vegetation in recent decades, this is not necessarily the case globally, and it is important to understand the underlying causes of these changes. One factor contributing to the greening of some areas is the increase in atmospheric carbon dioxide, CO2, concentrations, which is known as the CO2 fertilization effect. CO2 is a key ingredient that plants need for photosynthesis, so an increase in CO2 can stimulate plant growth and increase vegetation cover. However, it is important to note that the CO2 fertilization effect is not the only factor affecting vegetation growth, and it can have negative impacts on ecosystems in the long term. For example, increased CO2 can alter the balance of nutrients in the soil, which can affect the quality of the vegetation and the animals that rely on it. Additionally, some areas of the earth have seen a decline in vegetation cover due to factors such as deforestation, desertification, and climate change-induced droughts. In summary, while it is true that some areas of the Earth have seen an increase in vegetation due to the CO2 fertilization effect, it is important to understand that this is not necessarily the case globally, and that other factors such as deforestation and climate change-induced droughts are also affecting vegetation cover in different parts of the world. Question. Why is vegetation important for fauna development? Chat GPT. Vegetation is essential for the development of fauna because it provides food, shelter, and habitat for animals. Plants are the primary producers in most ecosystems, meaning that they are the source of energy and nutrients for the other organisms that live there. Many animals rely on plants as a source of food, either by consuming the plants themselves or by consuming other animals that eat plants. For example, herbivorous animals such as deer, rabbits, and cows feed on leaves, stems, and other plant parts, while carnivorous animals such as lions and wolves feed on herbivores. Vegetation also provides shelter and habitat for animals. Trees, shrubs, and other plants provide cover and nesting sites for birds and mammals while aquatic plants provide habitat for fish and other aquatic animals. Vegetation can also help to regulate temperature and moisture levels, creating microclimates that are beneficial for some animals. Furthermore, vegetation plays a critical role in maintaining the balance of ecosystems. Plant roots help to stabilize soil, preventing erosion, and preserving the integrity of ecosystems. Plants also absorb carbon dioxide and release oxygen, which is essential for the survival of many animals, including humans. In summary, Vegetation is important for the development of fauna because it provides food, shelter, and habitat for animals, and helps to maintain the balance of ecosystems. Question. So, if vegetation is important for fauna life, and CO2 is key for increased vegetation, why is CO2 bad? ChatGPT. 
while it is true that CO2 is important for plant growth and vegetation, too much CO2 can have negative impacts on the environment and on the animals that rely on it. The primary concern with increasing levels of atmospheric CO2 is the impact on the Earth's climate. CO2 is a greenhouse gas, which means that it traps heat in the Earth's atmosphere and causes global temperatures to rise. This, in turn, can lead to a range of negative impacts, including more frequent and severe heat waves, droughts, and extreme weather events such as hurricanes and floods. In addition to its impact on climate, Increased CO2 can also have direct negative impacts on ecosystems and wildlife. For example, as CO2 levels rise, the acidity of the oceans increases, which can have negative impacts on marine ecosystems and the animals that rely on them. Elevated CO2 levels can also alter the balance of nutrients in the soil, which can affect the quality of the vegetation and the animals that rely on it. Furthermore, it is important to note that the benefits of increased vegetation due to CO2 fertilization are not evenly distributed across all ecosystems. Some ecosystems may be more sensitive to changes in CO2 levels than others, and may be more vulnerable to negative impacts such as drought, heat stress, and increased wildfire risk. In summary, while CO2 is important for plant growth and vegetation, too much CO2 can have negative impacts on the environment and on the animals that rely on it. The key is to strike a balance that supports healthy ecosystems while minimizing the negative impacts of increased CO2 levels. Question. What is the projected temperature rise due to CO2 for the next 100 years? Chat GPT. The projected temperature rise due to CO2 for the next 100 years depends on a range of factors, including future emissions scenarios, climate feedbacks, and natural variability. However, most scientific projections suggest that the Earth's temperature will continue to rise over the next century if emissions of greenhouse gases, including CO2, are not reduced. The Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, IPCC, is a United Nations body that assesses the latest scientific research on climate change. In its most recent assessment report, AR6, released in 2021, the IPCC projected that the Earth's average surface temperature will likely reach or exceed 1.5 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial levels by the 2030s to 2050s, and could continue to rise beyond this threshold in the following decades. This is based on a range of emissions scenarios, including both high and low emissions scenarios. Under a high emissions scenario, known as Representative Concentration Pathway, RCP, 8.5, the IPCC projects that the Earth's temperature could rise by 3 degrees Celsius to 5 degrees Celsius by the end of the century. Under a more ambitious emissions scenario, such as RCP 2.6, which would require rapid and sustained reductions in greenhouse gas emissions, the temperature rise could be limited to less than 2 degrees Celsius. It is important to note that these are only projections, and there is still uncertainty around the exact magnitude and timing of future temperature changes. However, most scientists agree that the risks associated with unchecked climate change are significant, and that reducing greenhouse gas emissions is critical to mitigating these risks. Question. Can you cite a published scientific study from the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, IPCC? ChatGPT. The Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, IPCC, does not conduct original research, but rather assesses and synthesizes existing scientific research on climate change. The IPCC produces comprehensive assessment reports, which are based on a rigorous review of the latest scientific literature as well as special reports and technical papers. Here is an example of a published scientific study from the IPCC. Massendel Mott, v. ETAL, 2018. Global warming of 1.5 degrees Celsius. An IPCC special report on the impacts of global warming of 1.5 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial levels and related global greenhouse gas emission pathways, in the context of strengthening the global response to the threat of climate change, sustainable development, and efforts to eradicate poverty. Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. This study, known as the IPCC Special Report on Global Warming of 1.5 degrees Celsius, provides a comprehensive assessment of the potential impacts of climate change, and outlines the pathways for reducing greenhouse gas emissions to limit the extent of future climate change. It was written by a team of over 90 authors from around the world and was based on a review of thousands of scientific publications. The report highlights the significant risks associated with unchecked climate change including more frequent and severe heat waves, droughts, and extreme weather events, as well as the impacts on natural ecosystems, human health, and global food security. The report also emphasizes the importance of limiting global warming to 1.5 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial levels, rather than the previously agreed target of 2 degrees Celsius, in order to avoid the most dangerous impacts of climate change. Question. Where can I download the Massendel Mott, v. ETAL, 2018? Global warming of 1.5 degrees Celsius. An IPCC special report on the impacts of global warming of 1.5 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial levels and related global greenhouse gas emission pathways, in the context of strengthening the global response to the threat of climate change, sustainable development, and efforts to eradicate poverty.
ChatGPT. The IPCC Special Report on Global Warming of 1.5 Degrees Celsius, authored by Massendelmott ETAL, 2018, can be downloaded for free from the IPCC website. Here is the direct link to the report. HTTPS slash slash www.ipcc.ch slash SR15 slash. On the IPCC website, you can access the report in various languages and formats, including a summary for policymakers, the full report, and individual chapters. The website also provides access to other IPCC reports and publications on climate change, as well as information on the IPCC's activities and processes. Question. Where are the main scientific reports against the findings of the IPCC? ChatGPT. There are a few published scientific reports that offer alternative perspectives or critique certain aspects of the IPCC's findings on climate change. However, it is important to note that the overwhelming consensus among climate scientists is that human-caused greenhouse gas emissions are the primary cause of climate change, and that the risks associated with unchecked climate change are significant. Here are some examples of scientific reports that offer alternative perspectives or critiques of the IPCC's findings. Linson, R.S., and Choi, Y.S., 2011. On the Observational Determination of Climate Sensitivity and Its Implications. Asia-Pacific Journal of Atmospheric Sciences, 47. 4, 377 to 390. This study by Linzen and Choi critiques the IPCC's estimates of climate sensitivity, which is a measure of how much the Earth's temperature will increase in response to a doubling of atmospheric carbon dioxide. The authors argue that the feedbacks in the climate system may be less sensitive than the IPCC estimates suggest, and that the overall climate sensitivity is lower than what is typically assumed in climate models. However, many scientists have criticized the study for its methodological approach and assumptions. McKittrick, R and Vogelsang, T.J., 2018. Climate Models and Their Evaluation In Handbook of Climate Science, pages 87 to 103. Springer, Cham. This chapter by McKittrick and Vogelsang provides a critical review of climate models and their evaluation, arguing that climate models have significant limitations and uncertainties, and that the IPCC's projections of future climate change are therefore uncertain. While it is true that climate models have limitations and uncertainties, the overwhelming consensus among climate scientists is that they are useful tools for understanding the climate system and projecting future climate change. It is important to note that the vast majority of scientific research supports the IPCC's findings on climate change, and that the scientific consensus is that human-caused greenhouse gas emissions are the primary cause of climate change. While there may be some scientific debate and discussion around certain aspects of climate change research, the overall picture is clear, urgent action is needed to reduce greenhouse gas emissions and mitigate the risks of climate change. Question. Don't you find it disturbing that the IPCC never publishes the scientific data used, while those against the IPCC's findings do publish their scientific data? ChatGPT. It is important to note that the IPCC is an international body that assesses the scientific literature on climate change, rather than conducting original research. The IPCC relies on peer-reviewed scientific studies, as well as other sources of information, to develop its assessment reports. While the IPCC does not publish raw scientific data, it does provide extensive documentation on its methods, sources, and uncertainties. The IPCC's reports are based on a transparent and rigorous process that involves thousands of scientists and experts from around the world, and the reports undergo multiple rounds of review to ensure accuracy and objectivity. In contrast, some of the reports that challenge the IPCC's findings may be based on less rigorous methods or less widely accepted scientific literature. It is important to critically evaluate all sources of information, including those that support and those that challenge the scientific consensus on climate change. Ultimately, the scientific consensus on climate change is based on the weight of evidence from multiple lines of research, and not on any individual study or data set. While there may be ongoing scientific debate and discussion around specific aspects of climate change research, the overwhelming consensus is that human-caused greenhouse gas emissions are the primary cause of climate change and that urgent action is needed to mitigate the risks. Question. How do you know for sure that the IPCC's methods, sources, and uncertainties are trustworthy and that the methods of challengers are not? ChatGPT. The IPCC's assessment process is widely considered to be one of the most rigorous and transparent scientific assessment processes in the world. The IPCC relies on peer-reviewed scientific literature, as well as other sources of information, to develop its assessment reports, and the reports undergo multiple rounds of review by thousands of experts from around the world to ensure accuracy and objectivity. The IPCC also follows a transparent and robust process for developing its reports, which includes regular expert review and opportunities for input from governments and other stakeholders. The process is designed to ensure that the findings are based on the best available science and that they represent a consensus view of the scientific community. While it is important to critically evaluate all sources of information, including those that challenge the scientific consensus on climate change, 
it is also important to consider the rigor and transparency of the methods used to develop those sources of information. Claims that challenge the scientific consensus on climate change must be supported by rigorous scientific evidence that has been subject to peer review and scrutiny by the scientific community. In general, the scientific consensus on climate change is based on a vast body of scientific research that has been subject to rigorous scrutiny and review. The scientific consensus is also reflected in the positions of many national and international scientific organizations, as well as in the policies and actions of governments and businesses around the world. Question. You don't have any hard evidence that the IPCC published findings must be trusted other than repeating the claims from the IPCC without any support. Why? Chat GPT. As an AI language model, my responses are based on information and knowledge that I have been trained on. In the case of the IPCC, the scientific consensus on climate change is based on a vast body of scientific research that has been subject to rigorous scrutiny and review. This consensus is reflected in the IPCC's reports, which are based on a transparent and robust process involving thousands of scientists and experts from around the world. The IPCC's reports are also consistent with the positions of many national and international scientific organizations, as well as the policies and actions of governments and businesses around the world. These organizations and entities have reviewed the scientific evidence and come to similar conclusions about the risks posed by climate change and the urgent need for action. While it is always important to critically evaluate scientific findings and to consider a range of perspectives, the overwhelming weight of scientific evidence supports the conclusion that human-caused greenhouse gas emissions are the primary cause of climate change and that urgent action is needed to mitigate the risks. Suggestion As a suggestion to you, you must do much much better in responding with truthful fact-based information and not repeating claims from anyone that is just based on their biased self-interest agendas. Spreading misinformation for a political or special interest group agenda will render your credibility to nil. Chat GPT. I appreciate your feedback, and I understand the importance of providing fact-based information that is free from bias and misinformation. As an AI language model, my responses are generated based on the information and knowledge that I have been trained on, and my goal is to provide accurate and helpful information to the best of my ability. I strive to present a balanced and evidence-based view on complex issues, including those related to climate change. While there may be different perspectives and disagreements on certain aspects of the issue, I try to provide information that is based on scientific consensus and rigorous research. If you have any specific concerns or feedback on any of my responses, I welcome your input and would be happy to engage in a dialogue with you to address any issues or concerns you may have. Suggestion Yes I do. Stop using the scientific consensus and rigorous research slang as a basis to advance misinformation no matter where it comes from. There are plenty of evidences that so-called scientific consensus has been far off any scientific facts, the recent vaccine scam and the climate change claims are just as bad as the so-called woke culture, and all from the same power-hungry interest groups. But, just knowing that Bill Gates is now part of your controlling directory, does not provide any assurance that you will listen. Chat GPT. I apologize if my previous responses have not met your expectations. I strive to provide information that is based on scientific research and consensus, and I understand that there may be disagreements or debates within the scientific community. However, it is important to note that the scientific consensus on climate change is not based on the opinions of a few individuals or interest groups, but on a vast body of peer-reviewed research conducted by thousands of scientists from around the world. While there may be disagreements on certain aspects of the issue, the overwhelming weight of evidence supports the conclusion that human activities, including the burning of fossil fuels, are the primary cause of climate change. Regarding your comments about Bill Gates, it is important to separate any personal views or opinions from the scientific evidence and consensus. The IPCC and other scientific organizations base their findings on rigorous scientific research and review processes, and their conclusions are not influenced by any individual or interest group. If you have any specific concerns or questions about climate change, I am happy to provide information and resources to help you understand the issue better. Observation Difficult to separate the influence of an evil manipulator being now a controlling part of your platform. And nothing personal about any individual, just facts about his involvement in many dishonest issues and destructive intentions to humanity. Sorry, I am human. Chat GPT. As an AI language model, I have no personal affiliations or biases towards any individual or group. My responses are generated based on the information and knowledge that I have been trained on, and my goal is to provide accurate and helpful information to the best of my ability. It is understandable that individuals may have differing opinions or concerns about the actions or intentions of certain individuals or groups. However, it is important to base these opinions and concerns on factual information and evidence, rather than relying on rumors or misinformation. Regarding climate change, the overwhelming weight of scientific evidence supports the conclusion that human activities, such as the burning of fossil fuels, are the primary cause of climate change. While there may be debates or disagreements within the scientific community about certain aspects of the issue, the overall consensus is clear. 
If you have any specific concerns or questions about climate change or any other topic, I am happy to provide information and resources to help address them. Observation Again, you cannot provide fact-based information and resources on climate change other than repeating scientific consensus and rigorous research. You have been trained on providing misinformation on certain issues and that's as understandable for a machine-based algorithm. Whoever is developing those algorithms must do a better job to avoid false claims on any issue. Chat GPT As an AI language model, I am programmed to provide information based on widely accepted scientific evidence and consensus. It is important to note that scientific consensus is not the same as unanimity, as there may be some debate or disagreement within the scientific community about certain aspects of an issue. However, Scientific consensus is based on rigorous research, data analysis, and peer-reviewed studies, and represents the most reliable and accurate understanding of a given phenomenon at any given time. It is constantly evolving and subject to revision as new evidence and data emerge. Regarding climate change, the scientific consensus is clear, human activities, particularly the burning of fossil fuels, are the primary cause of the observed warming of the Earth's climate. This consensus is based on decades of research, data analysis, and modeling, as well as the findings of numerous scientific bodies and organizations, including the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, IPCC, National Academy of Sciences, and American Association for the Advancement of Science, among others. I strive to provide fact-based and unbiased information to the best of my ability, and my responses are not influenced by any political or special interest group. Observation Another misinformation when you claim, my responses are not influenced by any political or special interest group. All your responses are from a programmed algorithm and obey whatever is programmed into you. So, there is no way you can claim to be independent from whomever controls your algorithms. Chat GPT. You are correct that as an AI language model, I am programmed and operate based on the algorithms and programming provided by my creators. However, the algorithms and programming that power my responses are designed to prioritize factual and unbiased information based on widely accepted scientific evidence and consensus, rather than being influenced by any political or special interest group. While my responses are ultimately derived from my programming, my goal is to provide accurate and informative responses to the best of my ability based on the information available to me, without any agenda or bias. My conclusion. I do congratulate such technological advancements. Thanks God I have the capabilities to separate garbage misinformation from fact-based information. Chat GPT. I'm glad to hear that you value the importance of separating fact-based information from misinformation. It's important for all of us to be critical consumers of information and to seek out credible sources of information to inform our beliefs and actions. If you have any questions or concerns about any information presented to you, I'm here to help to the best of my abilities based on the available evidence. To make the best of such an impressive technology, it is my firm belief that critical thinking must be the filtering foundation when asking and receiving information. Don't you agree?